Okay, let's see this question. Which of the following three statements are true? The union of two recursive languages is recursive. So let's see this first statement. This is saying the union of two recursive languages is recursive. What is a recursive language? What is a REC language? So REC language is a language which is accepted by halting Turing machine. Halting Turing machines means a Turing machine, a Turing machine which will always halt. Okay, whatever string you give, whatever string W belongs to sigma star, whatever string you give, this Turing machine will always halt. It will definitely halt on all the strings. So the language of such Turing machine is called recursive language. Now he is saying the union of two recursive language is recursive. So this is true and we can very easily prove it. Let's assume that L1 and L2 both are recursive languages. So L1 is recursive, L2 is recursive. Because L1 is recursive, so we have halting Turing machine, let's call it H1. And because L2 is recursive, so we have halting Turing machine, let's call it H2. So now what we can do, we can make a halting Turing machine for L, H, uh, for L1 unit L2. For L1 unit L2, we can make a halting Turing machine. What we will do? Basically, we will make a new Turing machine. We will make a new Turing machine M. In this Turing machine, what it will do? It will run this H1 and H2, both these Turing machines, H1 and H2. So they will they will run in parallel. So whatever string you give, for example, you give a string W. Now this this on this W, this H1 will also run. On this W, this H2 will also run. They will run in parallel. And now if at least one of them accept w if at least one of them accept w then we will say then this m will also accept so what we can say we can say that m will accept if and only if at least at least one at least one of h1 comma h2 accept accept okay so this turing machine m it will accept w if and only if at least one of h1 comma h2 will accept w now you can say that the language of this turing machine m this is nothing but l1 union l2 okay because either uh, because either this h1 should accept or this h2 should accept or both should accept in that case m will accept so the language of m is definitely l1 union l2 but now is this m a halting turing machine is this uh, Turing machine M? Is this a halting Turing machine? Yes, it is a halting Turing machine because what will happen? Whatever string you give, whatever W belongs to sigma star you give, it is guaranteed that H1 will definitely halt, H2 will definitely halt. Okay, and because H1 will definitely halt, H2 will definitely halt, so M will also halt. So we can say that M will halt if and only if H1 comma H2 both of them halt, and in that case M will also halt. Okay, so this is this is why you can say that M is a halting Turing machine and the language of M is L1 union L2 and hence we can say that this L1 union L2 is a recursive language because for L1 union L2 we have halting Turing machine. Let's see this second. So this statement is true. Now the second statement he is saying the language 0 power n, n is prime is not regular. This is true. 0 power n, n is prime. Okay, this is a standard non-regular language. This is actually non-CFL. This is a CSL but not CFL. And this is a standard language. But we can prove that this language is not regular using pumping lemma. So very easily we can prove it using pumping lemma. What we will do? Let, let assume that this is our language L. Uh, n is 0 power n. n is prime. So this is our language L. Now, Let's assume that L is regular. Assume L is regular. So what we are going to do? We are going to prove that L is non-regular using pumping lemma. So assume that L is regular. If L is regular, then we have pumping length. So let's assume that pumping length, pumping length is, so this pumping length, this is your K. Let's assume pumping length is K. Now, from this language, what we will do, we will take a string 0 power n such that n is greater than, the, this n, this is greater than or equal to k. So basically from this language, 
uh, and this n is prime this n is prime so you can say that this 0 power n n is prime definitely this string let's call it a string w so this string belongs to language l and you can say that the length of this string w that is greater than or equal to pumping length so this w this w should be uh, we should be able to partition this w in three parts x y z such that all the three conditions will satisfy the first condition that is your the length of y should be greater than zero the second condition the length of x y should be less than or equal to k and the third condition x and y power i z this should belong to l for all i so these three conditions must satisfy basically these three conditions must satisfy and this such type of partition we should definitely have pumping lemma says that we should have this type of partition now let's assume that we have let's assume that we have this type of partition and these conditions are satisfied basically the length of y is greater than zero and length of x y is greater than equal to k uh, sorry less than equal to k now what we are going to do we are going to so this third condition will also satisfy hence x y power i z this will also belong to language l for all i for all i now what is the length of this uh, x y power i z what is the length of x y power i z the length of this is nothing but your n plus length of uh, you can say length of y multiplied by i minus 1 i minus 1 you can see see this is your x y power i z now the length of x y power i z this is nothing but length of x y z that is nothing but n length of x y z is n plus i minus 1 times i minus 1 times length of y this is the length of x y power i z okay one thing you can uh, now what you can do you can take i equal to you can take i equal to n plus 1 because you know that this condition will satisfy for all i so we can take i equal to n plus 1 what will happen now now it will happen n into length of y multiplied by n plus 1 minus 1 that is n so from here what you can say you can say n into 1 plus length of y so this string this string basically has length this so you can say this string x y power i z this string has the length n into 1 plus uh, 1 plus length of y so now this string belongs to language l but you can say this string has the length and the length is not prime the length is composite you can see the length is n multiplied by 1 plus length of y so this is a composite number and hence we can say that this string does not belong to our language l and hence we can say that for this i i equal to n plus 1 for this i definitely you can say that this third condition is violated hence the pumping lemma is violated and hence we can say that our assumption is wrong so this l is non-regular so this is the proof that this language is non-regular proof using pumping lemma very easy proof there is uh, nothing much in, you should know what is pumping lemma okay uh, and you can very easily prove it so this is the formal proof anyway the second language this is a standard non-regular language this is not cfl also because we can also prove it uh, using the pumping lemma for context free languages we can prove that this language is non-cfl also so anyway that is not required the context uh, the pumping lemma for context free languages that is not in the gate syllabus Pumping lemma for regular languages that is in the get syllabus and hence that is why I have given the proof using pumping lemma. Okay. So so we can say that this statement, this statement is also true. Let's see the last statement. Regular languages are closed under infinite union. This statement is false because what you can do very easily you can take for example in this we have already seen in a previous video we have already seen that regular languages are not closed under infinite union in that video i have already uh, mentioned that set of cfl are also not closed under infinite union set of uh, recursive languages is also not closed under infinite union very easily you can prove it for example you can take a language l and this language l you can take a power n b power n n greater than equal to 1 this l you know this is a non regular language 
this is a CF, this is a DCF language, but this is non regular A power and B power N. Now, this N you can write as an infinite union of regular languages. How can you write this L? Very easily. This L you can write like this. What you will do? A B union A square B square union A cube B cube union and so on. Uh, union A power I B power I union and so on. So you can see that N is equal to infinite union of all these languages. Each language is a regular language because each language is finite language. This is a finite language. Only one string is there. In this language also only one string. So this is finite. This is finite. This is finite. Every language a power a cube b cube. This is also finite. So every language is finite and every finite language is regular. So this is regular. This is regular. This is regular. But their union, their infinite union of regular languages that is non-regular. So you can say that regular languages are not closed under infinite union. So the answer will be this statement is true, this statement is true and this statement is false.